I think of it like a locust or something, like a or a cicada sheds their shell. You know, like I look back at all these shells or skins that I shedded over the years, and a lot of them I don't recognize, you know, and I'm like, who is that person or what the fuck was I thinking? You look at all these old versions of yourself, and then you are the you now, and hopefully you like that you best, because I feel like that's kind of all of our goals should be to keep growing and, and feeling like we're the best now that we've ever been. All right, you guys ready? Yeah. You know, if we stopped touring tomorrow, who would know what the legacy of the band would be if the band would like get even bigger because everybody was so pissed they couldn't see the band? Or if we toured for 50 years, if we would be playing for like two people again because nobody gave a shit? So all you can do is just like, oh, I guess we like playing and we're gonna play and come see us. You know, over the years, I've seen their their production grow, the 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 amount of people that are involved grow. And the and the show grow and the songs become, you know, more of a, you know, almost a, a, a bigger story and a story of their own. We kind of developed our voice in terms of like we're a band that is not afraid to like play covers and do weird things and have fun and stretch out and like take you on a journey instead of just you know playing your record. It's gotten easier as the more records we've gotten to, to make shows different because you just have more songs to try and fit in. We try to make each set so there's pockets of fun and pockets of introspection and you know pockets of dancing. There's a constant like mushing around of the old catalog and like plucking things out that have never been used or tried and maybe changing it. We have like 168 songs, so we have to really be on our toes and be ready for the next song. It's not like same set as the night before. We just did three nights in San Francisco where we do no repeats at all. So if you buy a ticket to a, a multi-night run, you're literally not gonna see the same show twice, not even one song. records, go on tour, and have people react to it. Then you really find out what songs are great and not so great. So it's sort of like if you only made studio records, you would kind of never get that feedback. Tom's giving me rough my money back to you. What's that? The stage is everything. The reason this whole thing exists is because we, we need to play. I miss my family terribly, but there's like something in me that I need to play. I'm really fried right now from this year. I'm totally fried, but I'm not thinking, oh man, I never want to do this again. Yeah. So I just don't, I think it's just sort of in our blood. We had always had a kind of discussion that we shouldn't play together because we, we, our friendship was always so good. We were scared if we were in a band, it would rip it apart. And, uh, but we said, fuck it, who cares? We did the first crazy little blast of shows. This is in true My Morning Jacket fashion, too. We did three shows in 24 hours. So we played Linus in Lexington opening right. up, and then we drove all the way to Nashville, mm -hmm. and then packed up and drove all the way back up to Louisville and played. That night. Yeah, that was my first day. So I got called for this. And it was so funny, because like, Maybe two or three weeks before, I was listening to KCRW, and I heard what what turned out to be the end of "I Will Sing You" songs yeah, on the radio. The same experience. And I heard the end of that song, just like the real triumphant guitar riff and the way the band came in and the way it was really patient and kept going. And I was kind of got a little misty in my car. I was like, I would do fucking anything to play that song. I'm really glad I never saw him before because I didn't realize it until we were on stage, yeah. like how intense the live part was. We, uh, we were rehearsing, we were all just kind of standing around 
working through the songs. Mm-hmm. Everybody's just kind of like mellow. And then we got to the first show. And the hair got like And, we, and Bo and I were like, oh shit. <laughs> At that point in time, they all had long hair, like down to their ass and like, you know, (laughs) head banging. Like I think Patrick and Jim didn't wear shoes. So they were like stomping around. It was like metal. I guess that goes back to the history of the band. We've always done that. Like we make these really you know, in my opinion, beautiful records. And we'd go out on the road and we'd play like we were a metal band or a hardcore band. We didn't really think about it. It wasn't like that was our intention. And that was the thing. Like, we didn't give a shit. We didn't know there was a formula. I listened to the records and I didn't quite get the power that they provide live. So I guess the first day that I did the audition, within probably like, I don't know, a song and a half, I was just like, wow, this is nothing like the albums and I must work for this band. When you get the five of those guys all, you know, kind of rocking out together and they find that energy state together, just watch out because, you know, at any moment it can explode into something that's almost indescribable. There's never really a sense at any time throughout the show that the band isn't giving 150% of all of their emotional, raw energy into every note that they're playing. This band, in my 20 years of, of, of working on the road and working with bands, is, you know, I mean, the best live fucking band in the world. good job listening to our hearts regardless of whether it was popular or trendy and I feel like by doing that we've built something that has value and that like will last a long time hopefully you know I think a lot of a lot of bands are obviously a a flash in the pan and my morning jacket or more of like a career trajectory band I think regardless of how big or small they are or have become, it's something special to the fans and they almost kind of want to keep them small and keep them their own. We try to play the same if there's only 30 people there or if there's 30,000. It's like, what are you going to focus on? The people who are here who are stoked or the fact that there's a ton of people who aren't here. You know, it's your choice. It's your time. You're playing the fucking gig. So that connection with the audience is really something magical. I feel like there's a a new calm in the band. It's like, I can't jump off the drum riser anymore and I can't like jump out of the crowd and I can't do all this, you know, all this shit. And I don't regret that. I'm glad that version of me exists too. But now I'm just like, (sighs) I'm just gonna sing and play the fucking guitar. Also, my drums are safe. (laughs) 